little bit of everything, huh? So, I mean, just a great piece of hitting there, you know. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just dumped it out the left field, but it was a huge hit. Gave us the lead after, uh, you know, falling behind there in the sixth inning. Walks, sacrifice, flies, or getting op opposite field knocks. Yeah, I mean, and, and the kids came, you know, uh, Eibner with a double and, you know, Chess with a couple of hits uh, was good to see. Uh, Esky with, you know, they're swinging the bats well. And, you know, we were... We were down five to one, I think, at one point, and you know, but it didn't, you know, Haas hit the homer to make it five two, and then we just boom, 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 just kept pecking away. And what'd you think of Duffy tonight? I thought Duffy for five and a third innings was the best I've ever seen him pitch. I mean, absolutely the best I've ever seen him pitch. And you know, you're sitting going over that game, and and we just didn't, we you couldn't see that coming. You know, his pitch count was down going into the sixth. He had a no hitter going. Um, Milky was going to be his last guy. But, you know, his stuff was still good. We were hoping that he could get him to roll over a pitch and get into a double play and get out of it. And uh, it just didn't happen. He tried to throw him a back foot slider and left it down the middle, and he hit it out of the park. At that point, I'm like, well, daggum, I don't want to bring Hoach in down four. Let's see if he can get through the inning. He still had 10 or 12 pitches left and ended up giving up another homer, and that was it for him. Um, but for five and a third inning, it's the best I've ever seen him throw. Outstanding fastball. I mean, he threw four balls in the first three innings. Um, just tremendous, great change up tonight. He had it all going. Um, Nick, you give certain guys a green light on 3-0. and Is Dyson in that group now? Dyson was today. He was today? Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it, it, there's times where we'll give Dyson, um, uh, you know, Esky. Normally, it's guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. But, you know, there was a situation there where if it was a good pitch, uh, I wanted to see if he could drive it to the outfield and get a sack fly. And... Um, of course, he was a little late on the first one, but got the job done on the second one. You don't order any bunts anymore. Was Eibner on his own there? Just trying well, Eibner was on his own, but he, being, <laughs> being new, he screwed the sign up and thought Jersh put the bunt on, and Jersh didn't put the bunt on. And I told him, don't worry about it, son. Nobody else on this team knows the signs either. So. <laughs> Were you going out to encourage a uh, second look at the play at third base uh, when Esky was – they called out originally in the seventh? Yeah. Is that what you – when you went on the field? Well, I got to go and ask for a crew chief review because I don't know how we lost the first one, but we did. Um, so that blew my challenge. So, But we were in the seventh inning, and from the seventh inning on, you can request a, a crew chief review, and I asked Teddy to look at it, and, of course, he, he said, no, and, no, absolutely. Nick, you alluded to the young guys. I think, I think in the end you had five guys starting tonight, including Danny, who weren't starters at the at opening day. And I, I, what, what, what does that sort of say about the resilience and about the young guys trying to grab the moment? Yeah, I mean, it just says a lot. We have a lot of confidence in, in these guys that we have here. Um, you know, we feel real comfortable with them filling in uh, and, 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 you know, picking up the slack where it's needed. You know, Chester, Chesler Cuth, Cuthbert has done a phenomenal job defensively at third base. He swung the bat very, very well. He did it again tonight. Um, you know, Whit Merrifield, I mean, what – I guess you can call it a surprise. He didn't surprise anybody in our locker room, but, um, you know, he's a surprise. And I did a radio show, a national radio show on Wednesday with Casey Stern and MLB Network, and – Casey said, Ned, you know, I pride myself on knowing players. He said, but I don't know who this Whit Merrifield is. And I said, well, Casey, you're going to know him because he's a really, really nice little player. And, I mean, we're just seeing evidence of it every single night. You always have to manage flux to some degree, but this is maybe as much as you've had in a while. Do you feel <coughs> conscious of that? No, I don't because I'm confident with what we got. I, I mean, our players are confident in, in, in their teammates. And there's no trepidation, there's no wonder, there's no panic. Um, you know, they know that these guys can do the job. What does it say about the composure to hit? Because some, sometimes when you call up guys, you're getting a look. These guys are getting called up to a world championship team, you know, a game out of first place. But what does it say about their composure from coming down, put in this situation? Well, it's not an easy situation. No, it's not an easy situation. But, you know, s some of these kids like Cuthbert and Merrifield, um, you know, they're just, I don't, I, I can't call them laid back kids, but because they're very competitive, but you know, they're not real emotional. They don't, they don't have w way highs and low lows, you know, they're really steady individuals. And, um, you know, I, I felt all along that, that wit, when he got here, he was, he was not going to be phased by the surroundings and 
He hasn't. It's like he's been playing in the big leagues for 10 years. And Cuthbert, we saw him last year. Nothing faced him. He just went out and played. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in their makeup. It's who they are. Nobody because, some, because, you know, some kids will get up here and they will, you know, get a little lost. And, and I, you know, I forgot when we watching Eibner's first at bat, you know, I asked Haas. I said, Haas, I said, you know, I've been in this game for 40 years. And I said, nothing makes me nervous. And it's, you forget that when you first get to the big leagues, there's a, ner a lot of nerves involved. And Haas said, man, you know, the first three innings, I didn't even feel my legs my first night that I played. He said, I, but you forget that stuff. And that's the beauty of the game. You know, these kids have worked their whole life to get here, and now they're here, and, you know, you want them to enjoy it. So a guy called up, you know, let's say you're 10 games under 500, a guy gets called up, but now you're called up with the team in a race, world champion. I mean, it's quite a big difference from normally when guys get called up. Well, These we, guys are called up. I mean, we've got special kids. That's all I can say. I mean, um, we've got kids that uh, can handle the situation. That's why, you know, we, we have such a comfort level in, um, you know, going, getting through this period, you know, without Moose and without Gordy.